Welcome to another Create and Learn video where we make magic happen with technology. Today, we'll be taking a look at how to use the properties window in Roblox Studio. Be sure to watch till the end because we're going to show you how to set a trap for your friends by making a part look like you can jump on it, but no, you fall through instead. So you've built yourself a really awesome obby, but it's kind of boring when everything is all gray. So today we're gonna to mess around with the properties window and take a look at all the different things that we can do using just the properties. We'll start with this wedge block right here. Everything right now is medium gray. Now, when you bring up your properties box, and if you don't have your properties window, you can find that on the view tab at the top of your screen. Over on the left side, two of the most common windows that we use are Explorer and Properties. So if your Properties window is not showing up, you'll find it right here, click on it, and it should show up for you. So here we go. Let's look through some of the properties that are available. The first one, which seems to be the most uh, common one that people change, is the brick color. You might have a certain theme that you want to do with your obby. Maybe everything's green or everything's yellow. So you can use any of the colors here. You can also go down to where it says more colors and choose a color that's more exact. You can even drag the slider around to get the exact color that you want for your parts. Below that, you can decide if you want a realistic look by using the cast shadow feature. Now, because we're kind of floating in the sky here, you're probably not gonna tell that, be able to tell that there's much of a shadow. If we go ahead and move this part up and over, now you can see there's a shadow on the left side of our wedge block here. So if we uncheck the cast shadow block, it no longer does that. So that's an option as well, if you want something to look a little more flat and not so three-dimensional. The material is what gives parts a different look and feel. Right now, everything comes in as a plastic part which maybe that's the look you want, but in case you don't, there's a whole drop down menu here that you can choose from. We can change it to brick. We could change it to cracked lava. There's all sorts of different uh, materials and textures that you can add to make your part look exactly how you want it to look. Then we have the transparency slider. Now this makes it, you may have played some obbies where there's a couple of areas that are either really hard to see or completely invisible. Transparency is a fun one to make if you're trying to really make it difficult to see different parts. It also makes it so, let's say you wanna put um, walls around a certain area where your players can't get out of the area, then you can put parts in there like walls and then you can make them transparent. So your players will bump into it and not be able to leave a certain area. Down here, you can change the name of your part. So we could call this wedge 17. And what'll happen is you'll notice up here in the Explorer, it changes the name of your part. That helps you differentiate between all the different parts. You can see I have two wedge pieces. And if I was gonna um, add a certain script, to a part named Wedge, it would apply to both of these properties. And maybe I don't want that. Maybe I just want it to apply to Wedge 17. The parent is where the part belongs. Right now, our Wedge 17 is part of the workspace. You can change that to go to any other place. Uh, let's say you don't want this part showing up until you place it or spawn it. Then you could put that down in um, server storage and recall it with a script and bring it back into your obby that way but that's another video to watch later on. Here we can even get uh, so far as to change the size of our part. This is your X, your Y, and your Z coordinates. So if I want, maybe I didn't want this wedge quite as long, I can shorten it up. Position is where it's gonna fall in your game space. So right now it's at seven and a half, five and a half, and negative 57. Maybe I wanted to raise it up just a little bit. So maybe negative 55 might bring it up a little higher or over farther. Orientation is um, how it looks as far as your rotation. So if I wanted to rotate this part just a little bit, I could take care of that in this area. 
two probably isn't going to see very much. Let's try 12. There you go. Now you can see it change. So now my part is rotated. You can do all these things as well with the move, scale, and rotate buttons up here. But if you're already in your properties area, you might as well play with some of these settings in this area. Another option you have that's really important is collision. For the most part, if it's a part that you want your player to jump onto, you're definitely want, gonna wanna click on can collide or can, and or can touch. Can collide means that this part can be um, smashed into other pieces and can touch means that your player is allowed to touch the part and not fall through it. If you uncheck this box and we hit play, our player will fall through this block because it's no longer touchable. Like uh, one of our previous videos when we were setting up our obby, we always talked about how every time you put a part in, you want to automatically anchor it right away, which you can find in that top menu up at the top. But you can also find it in your properties box. So if you're messing around with properties, your color and your material, you can scroll down and anchor your part right here as well. And you'll notice when I check this box and uncheck it, it also unchecks it up above here, like so. There's a lot of other more detailed properties here, but for right now, I'm going over just the basics to kind of give you some idea of what's available. You can add your own attributes as well. There's um, several other ways that you can add these in. These are more advanced um, choices, so we probably won't get into those in this video. So there's lots of different properties you can explore for each item. You can even change the color of your spawn points. You can change the material of just about anything that you want to change. Another item that you can feature with your spawn points is something called teams. And what this allows you for, a spawn point is also a checkpoint that will change where you're at in the obby and where you'll spawn if you fall off. So for this uh, area of the properties, you can set each of your teams to be a different color. You have to in order for the um, scripts to understand where to restart after you fall off the obby. This team color does not need to be the same color as your spawner, but a lot of people do use the same color just because it's more convenient to remember which checkpoint goes with which team color. And you'll be setting up teams um, in a different video with how to create those checkpoints to make them work. So here we have a level one and we have a level two. So this is our level two and we just made that into royal purple. I believe we chose the team color magenta. So we always wanna make sure that our team color for the actual checkpoint also matches the team color down here. Otherwise, when they click on it, the user interface that shows what level they're on in game will not show um, the right place. So for example, if I go over this checkpoint and start the game here under play here, when I touch this checkpoint, I will switch from level one to level two. And you saw that happen real quickly right here when I touched the spawner. If I was to go back the other direction on my obby, and land on the first spawn point level one, then my name would shift up to the under level one. Now you'll notice the team color does show up here in the inter user interface, and that is how you can make it very easy to identify, and it's also necessary for your scripts to work correctly. So now that we've had an opportunity to change several of our properties, one example I've given you is how we can make use of the can collide checkbox. So if you scroll down, we talked about that a little bit earlier. What I've done is on this red wedge, I have taken off can collide, can query, and can touch. So what will happen is if anybody tries to jump on that red block in game, they're going to fall right through. And then, so the only way to accomplish this obby would be to understand that you have to jump on the green one instead. So if I go to play, it'll look something like this. I'm good to jump on the green, but when I try to jump on the red, whoop, fall right through. 
it still shows up. It still looks like it's something you can click on, but it's a great way to set a trap inside of an Avi. It's always good to test out all these different features that you try by hitting that play button at the top. You want to make sure you can make all your jumps. You want to make sure it looks the way you want it to look in the game. And you want to be able to make sure your checkpoints work as well. We hope you enjoyed this look at the properties window in Roblox Studio. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified when we release our next Roblox Studio video and all of our wonderful Create and Learn introductory videos. Okay. Another great way to learn about more tools and scripting for Roblox Studio is to join one of our free online classes at create-learn.us. These live interactive Zoom sessions are led by certified teachers who love to code, design, and play video games just like you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.